You go, Pixar's Coco. Guess what, guys? We got a brand new surprise. I mean, nobody saw this coming. We heard back in August of 2015 that Pixar was developing a movie that would be set around Day of the Dead. And now we know we have the title, we have a synopsis of plot, we have some voice talent that's just been announced. How are we feeling about this? Well, I'm just impressed they're telling us stuff because I read an article like that that the Pixar is so secretive and they got it from Steve Jobs, which I found so interesting because he was like an angel investor back in the day. So Pixar doesn't usually like drop things like this so early in the process. So to feel there to, to learn more about it, I actually think is smart of them because this is a new story. We're in this a lot of sequels coming out from them with right. Cars 3 first and Incredibles and Toy Story. Um, so I'm very excited that they're finally doing something original again. And from everything we've seen and heard, I'm super excited. I don't know about you guys. Yeah, I'm I'm pumped. I'm really excited for it. Um, it's Pixar, so you know I'm going to cry like crazy. <laughs> just tears upon tears upon tears. Um, plus, I'm I'm just down for another Day of the Dead movie. I think that's awesome. I think I it's great. So many people movie. are going to be dead. It's going to yeah, make us there cry. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of dead, a lot yeah. of sugar skulls, a <laughs> lot, of, lot of fun makeup. Yeah, it's going to be fun. In Pixar, we trust. In Pixar, we trust. Well, so we do have a rundown, basically, of what this is going to be about. It is about uh, a young boy who is voiced by a newcomer, sort of Moana-esque. It's a kid named Anthony Gonzalez, who has never done this before. He plays a child named Miguel who aspires to be a musician. He wants to be like his idol, Ernesto de la Cruz, voiced by Benjamin Bratt. Not mm. mad at it. Uh, <laughs> and he's desperate to prove his talent. He finds himself on a stunning and colorful Land of the Dead journey, following a mysterious chain of events. And along Along the way, he meets a charming trickster named Hector, voiced by Gael Garcia Bernal. Uh, and together, they set off on an extraordinary adventure. Now, the big thing here is Miguel's family, sort of like in Footloose, hates music. Now, here's what Pixar has sort of been couching. This is a musical. This is Pixar's first musical. They gave us Wally, -E, which had no dialogue, and now they're giving us a big song and dance number. What do we think this will turn out to be? Charlie? I mean, it's funny because I think it's a trend now for musicals to not say they're musicals, to try to like hedge that for people who are like, oh, I don't know, movie musicals. But it really seems like this is a musical for Pixar. They're putting a lot of music talent behind it from Latin sources. So. I'm excited. I want to see what their interpretation of a musical, a movie musical would be. Well, you brought up Latin sources, and before we started, uh, Andy was talking about the headline that Vanity Fair put out. Do you want to talk about what that is? Yeah, I mean, they they, uh, they called it, I don't want to say it wrong, but they said this is a love letter to Mexico in the age of Trump, which is, uh, you know, that's a big statement to say, and it's a, obviously, uh, there's 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 challenges uh, right now with with Trump and that and the community. I, I love that they've made it's a you know it's an all uh, Latin cast like their their Hispanic cast is doing all the voices, um, and I, I was reading also that they put together a um, cultural consultant group to ensure that they really got you know the Mexican culture and heritage like proper. And I think that's just so important. I think in a movie like this, obviously, but also just admirable that Pixar is taking that. And I feel like they did a really good job with that in Moana too, mm -hmm. where they really got um, uh, the Polynesian culture. It's like so clear. So I I'm excited to learn more about it myself. And I know they're going to do such a good deal with all the details. Um, but I love that they did that because there was also controversy. I, I would I forgot about this, but they they tried to Disney tried to patent Day of the Dead. Did you guys hear what? about this? Yes. Ooh, that's what? Not Dark yeah. mouse swept in. <laughs> what? They tried to patent Dale Slips Morris and uh, Day of the Dead, and of course that did not go over well. <laughs> Wait, but was that like some lawyer who basically was like, okay, we're going to do sure. this thing called Coco, so we're going to... I'm okay, sure. I mean, we they, need to trademark you do all as imagery. a business, right? You do it as a oh. business. Oh, that, I think that would actually be dope. A Mickey Sugar Skull? <laughs> I'm sure that exists. Oh, come and on. And will exist. Well, yeah. I'm it's sure... It's now, yeah. It yeah. was like a blanket thing where they had right, to... They but, stopped and they've apologized and now they're they're really doing their most yeah. they're, they're what they can to sort of you know fix that. Well, but I think they also had to do this because you've got uh, I believe the director is a Caucasian male. It's the same dude who um, did Toy Story three. Did Toy Story Uncridge. three. So Lee Uncridge. and then the writer who was also sort of the co-director uh, is Hispanic. It's uh, I keep wanting to call him Alfred Molina, but his name is well, his last name is Molina. What is his first name? But what I wonder is, do you feel that there is that sort of responsibility, and will that make a better movie or is that just a message piece? I, I think that there is, I think if you're going to go into and do a deep dive into someone else's culture, you have to talk to people who are of that culture. And I think that that only makes the movie richer. I don't think that that, it's Pixar. So there's going to be, there's going to be some message in it, but it sounds like the message is going to be like, uh, music's dope. It's fun. <laughs> Let your kids do music or whatever. Um, but yeah, it, it's completely important. You have to go to people who know what you're talking about, and that's just going to make it a better, deeper, and more rich movie. I don't think that that. 
I think that the politicizing of it is going to be things that other people do. I don't know that it's necessarily what Pixar is even thinking of. I think they were just trying to be culturally sensitive. Yeah, they were trying not to be lame about it. And honestly, I'm kind of excited that kids will now know more about Day of the Dead. Like, one of the things I love so much about Kubo and the Two Strings is that it talks about death, and that is scary for an adult, let alone a child. So to make an animated movie about it, I think is really brave and really interesting. It is not, however, entirely original. Dun, Charlie, dun, dun. <laughs> there is another film. It was called Book of Life. Uh, it Which was, only one of us has seen. Uh, two, would be two people. Yeah, yeah, I've seen Book of Life. Oh. So uh, the reason I saw it is because Channing Tatum did one of the voices, mm-hmm. who is not Hispanic. It also had Zoe Saldana. It had Hector so Elizondo, who I love. And Ice was, Cube. Ice Cube was in it. Uh, oh, Danny Trejo. Yeah. What are this? Danny Trejo was uh. in it. Now will you see it? Well, so Book of Life, Charlie, why don't you run down what Book of Life is and we can sort of knit out what is and is not similar. So you've already read out the description of the plot or do we need to hear that again? Well, so the description of the plot for Coco essentially is it's a 12-year-old boy, he loves music, he's not allowed to play music, uh, and then he ends up going down this rabbit hole of Day of the Dead and He becomes a living ghost and finds, yes, Yeah, and finds friends and tricksters and it is a musical extravaganza. He meets with his ancestors, um, some of them recently deceased, so so here's the plot of Book of Life. So granted, a lot of Book of Life is about the love story between three characters. It's a love triangle. They meet as kids and then they both fall in love with her and she chooses one and yada yada. But the main story is Manolo. Uh, he also wants to be a musician. He wants to be a mariachi. Uh, and his family won't let him because they're a long line of bullfighters. So we already have that dynamic that's very similar in that he's not allowed to play his music, but he really, really yearns to play his music. (laughs) And I'm not going to say exactly how it happens, but he also ends up in the Land of the Dead, which they call Land of the Remembered, way more optimistic. Uh, (laughs) And he he has the, the sugar skull makeup, and he encounters his ancestors and tricksters, and recently departed people before he gets back to the living. Also, kind of a spoiler. But, so it's uh, kind of like a bug's life and ants. Yes, exactly <laughs> like that. Except a couple yes. of years apart. Yeah. Interesting. Okay, well. It's not the first time this has happened. Yeah, before. but you know what's cool about There's this? There's also uh, Shark Tale and uh, Finding Nemo. I mean, right. Yeah. Long, long developments Robots are going to have this. and Wally. I mean, come on. Was there a movie called Robots? Yep. yep. There was? With, uh, Robin Williams. Well, Ewan McGregor. Robots is so zany. here's what's amazing. Obviously, whatever Pixar does it, they do it so well yep. that the other one becomes sort of this Obsolete. Yeah, this long forgotten thing where you're like, oh, that was a trivia question at Bar Trivia. I don't think Which they I watched Book of Life and ripped it off. Oh, like, I don't think so. Yeah. There's no. such long development times, there's no way. There is absolutely no, just like there's no way they had a Trump thing in mind. Uh, but it's Book of Life is so worthwhile to watch. It is gorgeous, first of all. Uh, the, the plot's a little strange. Dialogue can get a little like cutesy, we're gonna make fart jokes, but it's totally worth the ride. They have such a, a, a strong aesthetic presence. Every single, so so it's queued up with this museum, uh, not instructor, museum guide, who's telling these kids about this story. So that has its own art style that's more realistic. And then the movie has its own art style, which is a little more stylized, Day of the Dead-like and kind of uh, mannequin sugar skull-like. And it's it's such a, it's, I feel like uh, some hack critic would say, it's a feast for the senses, book of life. <laughs> but it's just very pretty to look at and worthwhile. Well, and that's what I think we can expect from this. I, I'm really excited to see how they create sort of the two different worlds. I'm also really excited to see what sort of music they bring in because the composer is actually, well, the person who's been announced is the dude who does the music for like Star Wars and Lost and Elliot's. It's Michael Giacchino. So oh, no I, I don't know if he's actually going to be composing the songs. I'm assuming not. I'm sure they will bring Probably somebody in, but I think the score will be that. But I wonder if there will be some sort of contribution there. Mm. But in general, I just think that this is awesome. And... We're so aware of Halloween. We're so aware of Christmas. How many damn Santa movies can we see? A lot. So the fact that there are now two Day of the Dead movies actually makes me really excited that there is sort of like a grander understanding of culture. Well, I think we're talking about the visuals is always what I, and I love about, of this, of the holiday, just it's just the skeletons and the art and that the comes altars. out of it. It's so amazing, and I and, it, and I'm sure uh, Book of Life is great, but it's like I just know Pixar is going to bring a, an even bigger level to the oh, visual yeah. style, like the amount of time and money that Pixar can invest in this. And he was and even story, saying, frankly, yeah, exactly. But they were even saying like uh, there was there needs to be this tight close up of a skeleton. It was going to be a really emotional moment, so you needed to have the audience be able to connect with the character in a way that they forgot that they were watching animation. Uh, they were seeing a soul. Like they are just going to get. I I just can. Awesome. And reading sort of the descriptions of what they're working on in these characters, 
um, that giving the skeletons the eyeballs. Like they, Pixar does not skimp. Like every Pixar movie, think about it. Like I hated Good Dinosaur, but oh my God, was that beautiful? Totally. <laughs> like it, totally. it looked like a nature At documentary the very least. Yeah. with weird, silly dinosaurs in the middle of it. But uh, but I can't even. I'm so excited to start seeing more visuals yeah. come out of this because it, it sounds like they're getting they're getting this right, and I, it's going to be a feast for the eyes. The other thing that's so great about Pixar is when you go to their studios, you can walk through and they have all different kinds of art. Like there's watercolors people do and pastels and there's models and this guy, the guy who co-wrote and co-directed it, whose last name is Molina, he started out as like a storyboard artist back in 2007 when he did Ratatouille and has like worked his way up through the Pixar family, understands they're working so well. Lee Unkridge, of course, has directed great films for them. So I feel like there's a real coming together here and we're going to end up with something that I think is really special. Here's my question. We've got Incredibles 2. We've got Cars 3. We have Toy Story 4. Can I just say I'm really excited for two of those? <laughs> Which two, Andy? Incredibles. I'm all three of them. Incredibles is, is, was the one sequel I think Pixar was due to do, and I'm so excited it's finally coming back. And Rashida Jones uh, wrote I believe Toy in Brad Bird. I believe in those characters, so I'm excited for that. And I'll, I'll see a Toy Story forever. I, you, don't want to watch, so you don't well. want to watch Lightning McQueen yeah, get I mean, killed I'm, at the I'm beginning curious. of the Fast yeah. and the Furious but, uh, Cars 3? I wish, I wish Cars had been out and another original had been in, but I'm just going to say if I'm going to give Pixar two sequels, those are the two I would... They have those two passes in my book. They well, have so my they, money. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. They know this. Uh, I loved how Toy Story, Toy Story 3 wrapped it up, but I'm interested, interested to see how Toy Story 4 will uh, present a story that's worthwhile. Have and you I seen know any of the will. shorts, their Toy Story tunes? They're all mm -hmm. adorable. They're all fantastic. But will this be a resurgence from Pixar to skew more specifically to originals? What do you think? I'm hoping so. Um, I, and again, I love the sequels. They can also have all of my money. Please take it. Have my entire wallet. Um, but at the same time, so much of what you love about Pixar is their ability to um, to tell, like, you know, Toy Story is the story of a kid growing up. I want to see what other stories they have. Mm -hmm. um, because when you, when you hear about a Toy Story 4 movie, we don't know what it's going to be, but we have an idea because we know what the theme of a Toy Story is. I'm ready for them to start tackling other kinds of stories. Um, I am going to go watch a car straight up get murdered, though. <laughs> Hell yeah, Andy. What do you think? Yeah, well, I mean, but like you look back and like Ratatouille, such a good movie, such and you have uh, Wally, such a good movie, and you have uh, Up. Like these these one off stories they tell are just uh, just Inside Out. Oh my God! Like that mm. actually ended up maybe <sighs> topping up on my list. Um, so they have to keep you know doing that, and I think they've been doing that so well. But who knows? Hopefully they have other originals in the pipeline that they just haven't talked to us about because we did know about Good Dinosaur for a while, and I think that was their first sort of mark on the filmography of like, it's fine, it's what it is, it is sure. what it is, but it did not feel up to snuff as to other Pixar films. So maybe they're just being a little bit more coy on making sure the original stuff is better. Yeah. Um, so. Because you need the original stuff to make future sequels. Exactly. They've got to fill up their tank. Sure. Well, I can't wait for this. And we want to know what you guys think. You can let us know in the comments below. You can tweet us at SJ News. You can always click here for more Screen Junkies. You go, Coco.